Hey, thanks a lot for stopping in, guys. My call sign is Blitz, and today we are kicking off the new year with my number one most favorite video to do of all time, and that is my ultimate bug out bag packing list. I almost released this last year, but then I thought, Maybe it'd be cool to release this as my first video of 2021. So that's what we're gonna do. And I figure 2021, probably gonna be worse than 2020. So what better reason do you have to go ahead and build out that bug out bag or modify the gear that you currently have? So we're gonna go ahead and get into it, guys. We're gonna have a look at the pack, which my number one pack of all time, at least at this point in time, is the Direct Action Ghost Mark II. We're gonna have a look at that, and then we're gonna break down all those gears into particular categories from shelter to fire starting to land navigation and beyond, and we're gonna talk real world use because if you are new to my channel, I do not sit here in this chair and show you bright, shiny gear. I get out in the field and use it on a regular basis. So we're gonna talk real world use, we're gonna talk about what worked, what didn't work, what I loved, what I didn't love, and everything in between because I've literally spent the last year putting together what I consider to be the ultimate bug out bag packing list. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So what do we got here? We have the Ghost Mark II by Direct Action. Direct Action, if that name does not sound familiar to you, is a child company. Their parent company is Helicon Tex. So they are based out of Poland, and it just so happens I purchased a pack in the Polish Woodland Camouflage. So with that being said here, guys, let's have a look at the bag. We're gonna start with the outside, and we're gonna work our way in. So the camo pattern you see here is the Polish Woodland Camo pattern. I really like it a lot. It is kind of subdued, so even if I was in a you know an actual urban setting, I don't think the bag would like stand out like a sore thumb. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and just start at the top. First of all, quality grab handle. Material is rolled over here and doubled up, very securely stitched on both stress points. Right here at the top underneath the grab handle is a Velcro um, port for your hydration hose. And then moving on kind of here to the front of the pack, guys, we have a zippered pocket on the top it's nice and soft line material so you know you think of maybe stuff like sunglasses that's what they always say oh sunglasses should go in here me personally you know i might put camera batteries in here i might put a survival kit in here anything i want uh, quick and easy access to and take note of the direct action logo right there i think it looks pretty cool then there's a velcro patch panel with uh my santa claus on it for the holidays and then this is really cool. This whole panel right here, it, they call it a detachable organizer, but it completely comes off. So if you did not need this, you could just take it off and roll with the pack itself and you would save, I believe the space on this is about 3.5 liters and the weight is like three or four pounds. So you could drop some weight and slim down simply by detaching this. So I thought that was a nice little feature built in the pack that I had not seen before with other packs. So. What else is to mention here? Well, of course, with a pack of this quality and price point, you're going to have laser cut molly webbing. This is just great because it saves on weight <clears throat> and a ton of other benefits from the laser cut molly webbing. Now here on the side, guys, there is a uh, pocket that's expandable and it also has a, a compression strap around it. So, you know, this is gonna you know fit maybe a Nalgen bottle, 32 ounce or a standard US military canteen or for me, uh, it fit my um, hard case for my drone, and then I also put a poncho in the other pocket. So one pocket on each side, like you see right here. So um, apart from that, yeah, compression straps. Yes, I mentioned that. There's one on each side, and then there's um, well, there's a total of two on each side. One at uh, the bottom, and then one at the top that can come in on an angle and compress the pack like this. If you're not carrying this detachable organizer, or it clips directly in like that. Now one feature that I definitely pay attention to when I'm looking for a pack is the hardware. So the buckles are top quality, they're fast deck buckles, and then the zippers, as you can imagine, are YKK, but they've taken it another step and they've actually um, sh heat shrinked um, rubber around them. So, and then um, capped them off with this pull. So these, um, these aren't going anywhere anytime soon. So nice attention to detail there. And then also, I almost forgot to mention here at the top, there's a D-ring, there's one on this side and one on the other side. 
One thing I want to point out about this removable organizer is that it is just a large zippered pocket. And what I've done with this is I've um, alternated between putting my rain cover in here or part of the smaller tarp that I carry. So that being said, guys, let's go ahead and turn this around and look at what we got on the back. Now here, you're gonna see lots of great attention to detail and when we're talking about comfort. So first of all, with this split panel, one on each side, you get airflow through here. So your back doesn't sweat as much. And then of course, these are super deep and um, cushion so there's lots of support here and then it's going to be the same thing with the straps because with straps you all there's two things you want to consider you don't want narrow straps with a lot of padding that kind of is weird and i've seen that before you want straps that are really good width with a um with a good amount of padding so wide straps lots of padding that's what you that's what you want to look for and then something else too here you know you got um you got a little bit of webbing right here and you see what I've done is I've weaved my hydration hose through there. And then there's also a D-ring below that. I got my pace beads there. And then another thing to point out. So most packs have sternum straps. This one has sternum straps, but you can actually move the sternum straps in, um, in I mean, like a large range of distance. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then one thing else to mention is the shoulder straps are quick detached, which I like that feature as well. And then to just point out on the back here, we have a zippered compartment that opens up and you just have a whole bunch of space in here. I usually put my tarp in here, a couple trash bags and other shelter related items. But having that panel in there and that space to work with is really nice. And now guys, look at this. One of the biggest selling points, at least for me with this pack, was the waist belt. And you say, okay, great. There's a waist belt on there. I would expect to see that. Yes, indeed. But the waist belt is removable. So that is a whole different ballgame, guys. It's secured here in the middle with Velcro. And once I get to my shelter site, and maybe I need to go out exploring, I need to find some water or whatever, I can just slide this belt right out. I go ahead and put it on, and I'm good to go. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Obviously, this is my own equipment. This is an SDS Molly 2, 2 canteen pouch. And then on this side is kind of like an all general purpose pouch with um, light sticks in there, um, map, compass, and uh, fire starters and things of that nature. So that's it, removable Molly waist belt. Thought that was really cool. It also does come with suspenders. I didn't carry, uh, carry much weight in the actual belt when I was using it, so I left the suspenders at home. Oh, one thing before I forget guys, there are also cons compression straps on the bottom. So I could do something if, let's say I would needed more space. Maybe I needed to get more cold weather gear in there. I could take the waste pack from my bug out bag in 2019 and just attach that to the bottom like I did previously. And then just, just like that, I have a whole bunch of more space to work with. So that's another option that I like with the compression straps and the attachment points here. I can really have a lot of room, a lot of flexibility to add on where I might need to with this pack. So now let's go ahead and have a look inside that organizer. And the first thing we're gonna see here, shockingly enough, is an org panel. So there's a large deep pocket right here at the top that goes behind that. There are key hangers right there for the keys. There's about one, two, three, four little pin pockets right there. Then we got a zippered mesh pocket. And maybe this is overkill, but they have this heat shrink wrap too. That's fine. Um, and this pocket. You see here guys it goes pretty deep down there to the bottom then you know in front of that you got more space and then you have two pockets up here i was keeping a survival kit and um and the one with the flap and with the open one i had my radio in here or was it my scope oh yeah it was my scope so i had that in there and then on the inside of the organizer you see that there is a large deep zippered mesh pocket where you can put other stuff that you might want to pack on a three-day adventure all right, and now let's have a look at the inside here. And basically, you know, it's nothing complex on the inside. It's pretty basic in this main compartment. You have a large kind of open elastic pocket right there. That's where my hydration bladder goes. It has a hanger for the hydration bladder, which I think is pretty nice. And then the rest of the space is just, you know, it's just wide open space with the exception of yet another zippered mesh pocket here at the top. Okay guys, so you've seen the pack. That is the Direct Action Ghost Mark II. And now we're gonna go ahead and put this off to the side and have a look at that gear. Basically just break out all the gear into relevant categories 
and I'm going to talk a little bit about my experiences with those items, what actually broke in one instance, what I liked, what I didn't like, and we'll have a look at some of the items that I eliminated along the way. So that first and most essential layer of gear has got to be the everyday carry. So my everyday carry kind of started out with just the watch and a knife and a lighter and it's evolved a little bit over time based on my experiences. So we'll go, let's see, left to right, right to left, whatever, I don't think it matters, right? So we'll go ahead and get started with what is underneath this, which is a multicam face wrap by Condor. This is an excellent asset to have, of course. First of all, you can cover up your face and camouflage yourself, thereby concealing yourself better in a wilderness environment. But beyond that, you can use this as a way to filter particles and rubbish out of water that you need to purify and drink. You can also use this as a face wrap <clears throat> and basic whole head wrap at night so the no -seam don't eat you to death and just a ton of other uses for a uh, proper face wrap. So I strongly recommend if you if you were gonna carry anything, go ahead and ditch the bandana and probably carry something like this. This is definitely my favorite. So beyond that, uh, what do we got here? So we have a Suntu wrist compass. Now why would I have something like this? Well, based on my experience of losing my compass in the swamp and thereby losing my way and you know basically having to trudge on my hands and knees for miles and miles to make it out of the swamp i figured it would be a good idea to have a compass that literally sits on my wrist and it's always available at all times so this wrist compass is pretty cool because what it is it's not just your traditional compass right you know here's 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 magnetic north right there that's the black arrow and then the red arrow and basically what you do in order to go north is you keep that you know you follow the direction and you keep these lined up <clears throat> on top of each other but what this provides is the ability to sight towards your object and you know let's say that you see a landmark in the distance and you want to travel to that so you go ahead and point this at the landmark or whatever you want to sight on you record and you observe what uh, degree mark you're actually sitting on and then you go ahead and turn this dial to turn the red to match up with the black and as long as you keep the red in the shed you'll be good to go so i got that compass on one wrist guys and then i have my go-to budget watch this is a timex expedition and i think it retails 40 45 bucks it's just a basic watch when you press it it does glow in the dark the background does glow in the dark aside from that just a basic watch and that's really all I need when I'm out in the field don't need anything fancy and definitely nothing like a smart watch the next guys you gotta have a good pocket knife and this has been my go-to blade as you can see for many many years I think I've had this going on I had this back when I was in Tennessee yeah, I think this goes back five years, something like that. But this is a really solid knife. It has a very, very strong liner lock right there. And this has been my go-to blade for wilderness everyday carry for since basically forever. I've tried out other knives, but I really like this one. I've actually even uh, split wood with it. So really solid blade. This is the Ontario, or uh, Ontario, yeah, Ontario Rat 1 folder. Now sometimes I'll carry multi-tool, sometimes I won't. This time around I was, and this is the Leatherman Skeletool, which is hands down my favorite multi-tool. Some multi-tools are too big and bulky. This does not have that problem because you can see how it's all drilled out here to save on space, but it definitely does not have any impact on the performance or, um, well, I mean, just the overall design of it is great. It has an awesome like look and aesthetic. And uh, yeah, just an overall great tool to have. I, you know, you can use the pliers to pick up hot things off the fire. Um, there's a bit driver right here that comes in real handy. And uh, you know, I mean, basically what else, uh, what else could you want? Oh yeah, also um, easy way to um, cut fishing line up close and personal. And um, yeah, there's another, there's another bit right there too. So yeah, overall great multi-tool, lightweight, and it has a pocket clip right there. Well, guys, it sounds like the black helicopters are coming for me yet again. So um, you might not see me for a while. And now the most important part of the everyday carry, of course, is the blade, guys. This is so fresh and so new. I may actually be the only person in the United States who actually has their hands on this blade. But I'm telling you guys, I've been looking for a long time for a blade of this size and this balance because I've learned, you know, 
I've been down here in Florida, I guess, going on three years now, and I really learned the environment pretty well, and those smaller Mora blades just don't cut it. But then again, I don't want to be dragging around a, a larger blade like a Parang or a machete. I needed something kind of in between, and that's what I get from this blade. And overall, guys, aside from the awesome aesthetic on this blade, first of all, I mean, that's just obvious. Um, this is just an amazing feel in the hands. The grip and the texturing on these G10 scales is outstanding. And um, during my first use, I was really going to town with it and it just felt good and it felt natural in my hand and um, really balanced and really easy to control. From lots of experience and hard lessons, guys, I've learned that I want my blade to be rugged and reliable and really require zero to any maintenance at all. So that's why I have to have a stainless steel blade. This is cryogenic stainless steel and then this finish, this black powder coating, is basically indestructible and it stands up to wear and tear very well so that's what i want out of a blade i don't want to have to haul you know little things of oil around i don't want to you know worry about corrosion or rust or having to maintain it i really want it to be strong enough to basically maintain itself so another thing that i want to point out here guys is looking there closer you see that the blade looks a little bit different so there's that part right there but then there's this part right here what I'm talking about is dual grind zones. Here's your hollow grind and here's your taper grind. So depending on what task is at hand, you're gonna use a different section of the blade. So this part right here obviously is gonna be great if you're splitting wood or batoning. This is gonna be much more functional. This part is gonna be more functional for other tasks. So having those, those two grind zones in there, I thought that was pretty cool and I don't believe I personally have ever seen that in a knife. So overall, my first impressions with this blade are just absolutely amazing. I'm in love, for lack of a better term. It is, this is probably the, one of the nicest knives, if not the nicest blade I've ever owned and probably the best one in terms of um, real world, real, ugh, excuse me, real world use in the field. So there you have it guys. That is my everyday carry for the wilderness. Let's go ahead and move on to the next gear category. Up next guys, we're looking at signal and comms and I got the good old trusty Baofeng radio here with an upgraded antenna. And I found through lots of testing that I can only get about a quarter mile out of this in either a forest environment or an urban environment. And that is that goes for this antenna the, uh, the version that is twice as long as, as this one, and then the tactical folding antenna. I can't get anything more than a quarter mile. Anything out of that is not clear reception at all. So uh, I'm a little disappointed in that. And maybe you guys can provide some input, maybe some feedback on what your experiences have, have, have been with the Baofeng. But whatever the case is, this is what I'm working with right now. And then uh, what else we got here? All right, yes, of course, my favorite headlamp of all time, the TAC. Tika, and it has four different lighting modes. First, you get the white light, then you get the red light, then you get the green light, then you get the blue light. So, with that, you got lots of different lighting modes. The green one, I use that at night. That helps preserve my night vision the best and also makes anything I'm reading looking really good. So, Tactica headlamp, it is a little pricey. I think it comes in in like $40, but it's basically indestructible, powered by a couple of AAA batteries that last, well, basically forever. I, I, don't, I don't think, I think I replaced these six months ago. And then keeping on the topic of lighting, guys, I do have an actual traditional flashlight. This is the Streamlight Pro Tac. And this is one of my favorite little flashlights. It's, uh, you know, got a pretty decent beam on it. And I have to follow the survival rule of one is none and two is one. So I gotta have a backup to the primary headlamp. I also like adding chem sticks to my gear. And why? Because, you know, they can be used for different purposes. So based on the color, let's say I have a green one and that's gonna be good to crack open for reading at night preserving my night vision, but also concealing my position instead of blasting out some sort of, you know, 300 lumen white hot light. Then I got this red one here. Now, maybe I crack this and I hang this above my shelter at night so I can kind of have a little ambient light and I don't have to grab, you know, maybe like my headlamp or my flashlight just to look around and once again, give away my, pos my position possibly. So the red one might be good for that. And then of course this one right here, you know, think about setting up your perimeter security and using these as kind of um, a uh, tripwire alarm. So this gets cracked when, some, when something or someone breaches your perimeter and 
what do you do? Well, if <laughs> you basically fire anywhere, you see the glowing, right? So you're firing right at that target that you've already marked with the chem stick. So lots of different uses for these. And um, yeah, I just like to throw a couple in there. Never a bad idea. Now, keeping in, keeping in contact lighting and illumination, check this out. This is really cool little item I picked up from Solcoa Survival. And all you do is fold this over, rub it just like the instructions, and you get a projected green light coming out. It's really cool. And you can kind of shine and direct the light. And obviously it ena enables you to be able to read at night and it preserves that night vision and your position. Blah, 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 blah. So that's cool. And then finally, I have a signal mirror. Moving on to the navigation module, and this is something I also like to keep pretty simple and straightforward. I have my trusty Write in the Rain notepad and my zebra pen. My Write in the Rain pen is actually like a wall. I haven't been able to find it, so the zebra is my backup. I do also have a pencil right there as well. So putting that off to the side, here is my primary compass. This is the um, this is a complement to the wrist compass that I showed you guys. Also Sun Tzu, it's my favorite brand of compass. And this is just your basic base plate compass. You put your bearing on there, you get the red in the shed, and you set out and you do your thing, right? The dial is also um, illuminated, glow in the dark, which is pretty nice. And there's also a magnifier there, and then rulers and everything else you need to be able to properly inspect the map and draw your route, figure out your distance, and all those kinds of important things that you need to be able to do when you're navigating with a map and a compass. I also like to implement pace beads, ranger beads, whatever you want to call them. These are super handy for keeping track of the distance that you're traveling. It's not the most accurate way to record distance. My smartwatch would be the most accurate, but that runs out of battery and pretty much worthless. So these are a great way to go. And basically how they work, it's super simple, guys. For every 100 meters you travel, you pull down one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine beads and once you hit that tenth bead you have traveled 1000 meters and then you reset all the beads and you start over again from scratch so i hang this from um, the shoulder uh, webbing on my pack and i always have this handy so this is a great little asset lightweight easy to use easy to understand and then the primary part of the navigation module is actually the map so I've gone through a lot of different map cases. I wanted to be very lightweight and simple. So this is a Magpul DACA bag. They're kind of like they're all around utility bag. This one has this nice big clear window on the front so I can see my map. I also have this little ruler and a protractor thingamajigger here. I have a pencil, a couple other sh um, sheets of right in the rain paper, my map, and, and then this Magpul case is basically waterproof it's not a hundred percent waterproof but you can see the storm ceiling on the seam and it is very tightly sealed so that pretty much covers me on the navigation side let's go ahead and move on to the next category what could it be Moving on to tools, once again, very simple, very straightforward. I have four items here, two of which you've seen already, the Leatherman Skeletool, and then also my favorite primary blade, but they are included here because they are tools and they belong in this category. So that being said, where I looked at those items, put those off to the side. And my primary point of um, concern or interest here is these cutting tools. So typically, you're gonna have a folding saw, and those are great, but they are bigger, they do take up a fair amount of space, so why not go with literally a chainsaw? I have used this chainsaw for years now. I think I've had this for about three years. I got this right when I moved to Florida, and when I built out my Wilderness Everyday Carry smock, I included this as one of my options for cutting. It is super effective. The only problem with this chainsaw is the fact that once you get through that that, that piece of wood, let's say you chop down a tree or whatever, actually processing that wood into smaller pieces is indeed more difficult. And that's where it would be nice to have a folding saw like the good old Baco Laplander. I do also have 
the Silky Pocket Boy, but I found the blades on the uh, Baco Laplander to be um, a little more durable and less flimsy and less prone to breakage. So I'm kind of torn between these two. I like this because it's smaller. I like this because it processes wood better after the initial takedown of a tree. So I don't know if I had to really make a decision on this, I would probably just go with this guy right here and call it a day. Next up, we're looking at shelter and there's a lot going on here because there's a lot of pieces and parts to my shelter setup and there's a little more to it due to the fact that it is winter here in North Florida. And when I say winter in North Florida, I mean maybe the temps drop down to 30s at night, maybe 20s on maybe, you know, two or three nights out of the entire year. But typically the average nighttime temperatures are ranging between 30 to 40 degrees. So I like to stay warm out there to some extent. So. No matter whether I am going to be on the ground or whether I'm going to be hanging the hammock, I'm always going to have a sleeping pad with me. This is a sleeping pad I bought two, three years ago. I don't know, all my gear is well used, guys. I've had this stuff for years and I swear by it. I've never had any damage or leaks or tears to the sleeping pad. It's super comfortable and as you can see, it's nice and compact because sometimes I might get out there and I don't have an option for hanging my hammock or what have you, so I will literally just throw this on the ground, throw up my tarp, and be good to go. And then if I am hanging the hammock, I can actually slide this in where the um, where the whole uh, the good old um, hammock quilt would go, and that gives me a little bit of insulation from the cold. If I'm on the ground, I've tried this down. This is this is kind of like a DIY sleeping bag that works here in North Florida. I got the SOL Escape Bivy Sack, and I combine that with my Wooby. And I basically stuff the Wooby inside of here and I can get down to about 40 degrees and still be quite comfortable, which is pretty decent. Like that, this is my sleeping bag. So I'm pretty happy with that setup. That's working out pretty well for me. And either way, whether I'm doing the hammock or not, I'm definitely gonna have that Wooby with me. And then just in context of shelter or general self-protection or whatever, I have a schmog. Sometimes I have to cut a piece off this to use it for something. And um, over a while, you know, after a while, I have to replace the schmog. But there's just a multi-purpose item, guys, for everything from um, straining debris from water to a sling to wrapping around your head to... Um, just basically everything, a towel to dry off with after you take a bath in the local creek. Yeah, Shamog, definitely a must have. And then moving on to the tarp, we got a ground sheet here. This is pretty robust. I usually will put down trash bags on the ground underneath my shelter, but it's just kind of crappy and they, they slide all over the place. So with this, you can pin it out on each side and have a nice ground sheet or drop cloth underneath your shelter. Lots of space for all your gear. And then finally, the star of the show. If you guys have been here on the channel for a while, you've seen me go through multiple evolutions of my tarps and my shelter. Now, the latest has been the DD hammock plus the DD tarp. Now, when you're running any sort of hammock, you need to have a large tarp in order to, to span that entire distance. And usually that's a nine by eight or a 10 by foot, a 10 by 10 foot tarp. Problem with that is, is if you're carrying a tarp, that means you're gonna have to also carry some sort of rain gear. And that, and that in my case, is just a poncho. So I'm out there toting around the poncho and the tarp and all this other kind of crap, but what I really wanted to do is use a military issue poncho, which doubles as a shelter. The only problem is the US versions are not nearly big enough to serve as a tarp over a hammock. But that whole thing changed when I found literally the biggest military issue poncho I have ever seen in my life. This is the M90 Swedish camo pattern. This was obtained from Tack Up Gear, which is located in Sweden. And this is Swedish military issue poncho slash tarp. It is, if I recall correctly, 10 feet by 10 feet. It is massive. It's all secured with zippers here. And then there's also this nice big hood at the top. So I think this is gonna be the best shelter setup for me. And hopefully by the time you see this video, I'll have a chance to get this out in the field because I literally just got it two days ago. 
So just like my water purification options, I like to keep the fire starting very simple and straightforward. I got the light by fire, fire steel right here. I've had this for three years, four years, I don't know, a long time. And it is a quality fire steel, the best on the market and top quality ferro rod. Other ferro rods will get dented and pitted after just a little bit of use, but this ferro rod, as you see, is nice and slick and smooth, and the striker just travels along it, no problem, and you're always gonna get a proper spark. So, got that right there, and then the ExoTac match case. Good old cot balls with Vaseline. I don't do anything else for artificial tinder sources and then I took an extra step of wrapping this in glow-in-the-dark tape so it's easy to locate at night. Up next guys we got to have a look at medical. Once again I like to keep this nice and simple. I have my base med kit from Live the Creed. This has everything I need to handle all the basic stuff that I might run into in the forest environment in terms of injuries. You know there's burn cream in here, uh, band-aids, surgical gloves, you name it. All the listed stuff right there and then I've also added some athlete's foot cream and um, some pads in order to keep to keep care of my feet, take good care of my feet, because those are basically my wheels. My feet are out of commission and they're all nasty and just you know having some issues, then I'm kind of out of commission. So being able to take care of your feet in the forest environment is also really important, especially if you consider how wet your feet typically get. So we got that for all the basic medical. And then for anything that bleeds a lot, I have my trauma IFAC from Blue Forest Gear. And that just pulls out of that handy dandy sleeve unfolds and just like that you have access to all the trauma life-saving equipment that you might need including the bandage the tourniquet the gloves and some other fun little things that are buried underneath here what is this ah adhesive strip medical tape and uh yeah just the basics for trauma stopping that bleeding until you can get to proper medical care up next, guys, is water purification. And here, I just like to keep it simple, stupid simple. I got my potable aqua. I got the chloroflock, which takes care of one liter of water in about 10 minutes. And these are just backups to the primary, however, which is the Cenoc bag with the Sawyer Squeeze. I've had a Sawyer Mini, tried out the Sawyer Squeeze. It is a bit smaller and lighter so i like it and i get about the same flow rate that i do with the sawyer mini so you know just basic stuff here guys i also throw in the straw that goes with the sawyer squeeze in case i need to break out the canteen and canteen cup fill this up with crappy water and then drink directly from that so i got multiple options to purify water that is very important and then the next way to purify water finally is with the canteen stainless steel world war ii issue canteen and you just put this by the fire and it'll boil water right so how easy is that guys so we got the canteen cup the canteen they do not fit they don't nest in there but i like to take this little space right here and stuff a rag down here kind of like a camp rag to keep my utensils and uh, my cooking stuff clean so we got the stainless steel canteen canteen cup this is from a british pattern 58 set and then the rest of the items for water purification. Now onto the topic of food because you've got to eat while you're out there in the forest environment. I like to focus on lots of good quality carbs with some protein and fat mixed in there. I got these sports energy bars. These are super handy. They're usually used by endurance athletes. Good to go. We got lots of fat and lots of good quality carbs in these nuts and dried fruits. I also have one of my favorite protein oatmeals. This thing comes in at nearly 250 calories with a bunch of carbs, almost 50 grams of carbs. I also, for a meal, I like to keep this simple. Hey, maybe I'm throwing a New York strip on the grill, or maybe I'm just eating this. But either way, I have some options there. And then in terms of cooking, I used to carry my um, propane backpacker stove right here. This is the, um, this is the Optimus Terra. Great little stove, don't get me wrong, but the only problem with it is it's pretty, pretty damn big and it's also leaking crap everywhere, but whatever. Anyways, I wanted to have something a little bit smaller and I ran into this little folding stove setup, which is basically 
which is basically like your regular SBIT pocket stove, but much smaller and much more compact, and it only uses one of these. And I found that only one of these is enough to get me some water boiling. And then of course, I also have a lid for my canteen cup. So when I look at food, that's kind of how I structure things. And if I do have an opportunity to bring some fresh food out there in the field, you're damn right I'm doing that. Every bug out bag, any bag, to be honest with you, that is designed for survival without resupply must have a hygiene kit. Gotta stay clean out there, guys. And a lot of people, I just don't see them packing this, but toothbrush, toothpaste, obvious. Um, also got, what else we got in here? Got some camp soap. These little sheets are really great. You just add a little bit of water and they soap up real nice. And then I got a whole bunch of compressed towels there. And also, yeah, look at that down to my last wet wipe. Got to refill. These ones from Survive Wear are really good. They're super big and they last. So you only need like three or four of them and you're pretty much good to go for the duration of a three day adventure in the forest. So staying clean and uh, not smelling like a wild animal. Never a bad thing. So that's how I'm handling my three day survival kit for 2021, but it's not done, guys. I'm going down a new direction where I'm keeping the foundational gear, but I want to be able to easily add on equipment based on the mission. So let's say there's a situation where we're talking real like a grab your bag, grab your gun, and run in the woods because people are chasing you and want to kill you or something like that. Think escape and invasion. So with this bag, I have all the fundamentals for survival. I've got the five C's covered. Hell, it probably the 10 C's are covered in this bag, but I need gear that's that's particular for escape and evasion. So I'm building out that module and we're talking, you know, a Faraday bag for the cell phone. We're talking some uh, booties that I'm making to go over my boots to conceal my tracks. Some other stuff like that, some handcuff keys, some shims, uh, you know, the stuff of that nature that will enable you to escape and invade an enemy, you know, escape thermal detection, all that kind of good stuff. So I'm thinking in that mindset for 2021, having that basic bag scaled out and ready to go. And then depending on the mission, I can grab whatever I need. Let's just say I'm going out in the woods to hang out and do bushcraft for a few days. I'm gonna grab that add-on. Maybe it's escape and evasion. I literally have to run the woods to save my life. I'm gonna grab the E&E &E add-on. You guys get the general idea. So with that being said, something very important that I need to tell you. Please look at that subscribe button. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel and make sure you hit that bell notification because I'm constantly shadow banned. Nobody gets the notifications from my content and I have that same experience with a lot of my favorite channels that I follow in the political realm, the subversive political realm, and just also in the context of self-reliance. I just don't get these notifications. YouTube is deleting channels. They're, they're scrubbing users. They just, um, they're just doing whatever the hell they want. So I figured it would be a good idea just to remind you, hit that subscribe button and tap that bell notification. And then even beyond that, guys, I have links to the other platforms where I replicate my content because I preach a survival rule of one is zero and two is actually one and I'm living it because I'm re replicating that content over on Gab, over on Rumble, and also over on BitChute. So make sure you look at those links, go subscribe to the Survival Outpost on those other channels so you will stay informed and up to speed with the content that I put out. And another bonus, I'm not getting censored over there so I can actually put out some, some unique content that um, would totally just get literally deleted and, and probably get me kicked off of YouTube. So go check out those other channels. Go make sure you're subscribed on those platforms and I will see you in the comments. Thanks for the support, guys. Hey, you still there? Cool. Then don't forget to check out our website located on the interwebs at thesurvivaloutpost.com. We are designed and optimized for hard use, for the self-reliant who talk less and hustle more. Thanks to our international connections, you get first access to unique and innovative products from around the world. This is the gear that will give you that edge you need in a survival situation, or if you're just trying to keep the lights on when the power goes out. Any content mentioned in this video is linked up down there in the pin post, and be sure to watch the suggested videos for more real-world survival training and knowledge.